uh, exam and curriculum. We're here with uh, Todd Hopkins and Zipporah Kapp. Um, we'll introduce ourselves in a moment, but we appreciate you all showing up. We uh, want to have a little bit of fun today as we go through this, this webinar. Um, as you can see with our little tagline, to spin or not to spin, we're going to have some fun with that as we go through. I think it's, it, we can have fun, but it's be very serious about that statement as well as we think about uh, the data, data analyst responsibilities as we go through um, with this. So, you know, once again, um, I am Todd Hopkins. I'm the Vice President of, of Operations and Product Development. I'm responsible for the creation of the CIW programs and the curriculum and certifications that we, we produce here at Certification Partner. And we have Zipporah Katz with us. Uh, good morning. I'm Sephora Katz. I'm the Vice President of Educational Programs. Um, I oversee to make sure that our programs meet educational and pedagogical rigor. I also work with our ICT Essentials Program, which is sort of the precursor to all of our flagship CIW vendors, vendor neutral certifications. And I work with our faculty across the country uh, in professional development and discuss at great length best practices in the classroom to make our curriculum come alive and become meaningful and significant learning events. Thank you. Laura. Thank you, Todd. We uh, enjoy working together in, in bringing these uh, materials to you and hope that uh, uh, you understand the, the work and the effort that we put into this to make sure that they're quality products. Um, just to go through our agenda a little bit today, we're going to We'll first talk a little bit about CIW for anybody that's new. We'll give you a bit of an overview of kind of our philosophies and thinking. We'll move into the evolution of big data and why being a data analyst is important. And, and then we'll take a little bit of, of a walk through our approach with CIW, um, the objectives of this particular program, the core topics of, this, of the curriculum, and the things we need to do. And then we'll end out with um, a view of some of the course materials, explain those components, and where this particular program fits in the CIW pathway. So as we move right into what CIW is and who we are, we are um, we take a holistic approach to curriculum and to education. We want to provide a large variety of features so that as an individual works through the, the, the curriculum and prepares for the exam that they have a variety of options to learn depending upon what their learning style is. We have, um, we focus on internet technologies. We provide a variety of opportunities that we can do with, that you can go through as you learn about technology and learn to become a producer of the internet. Our focus is vendor neutral. That means that we don't follow a vendor treadmill but we are not necessarily vendor absent. We, we want to take a, a wide view of how all of these technologies can come together, how you can build websites, program for websites, uh, design, um, and, and work in a marketing, direct marketing um, approach, and bring all of those components together without being forced every time a vendor changes their application that you have to go and relearn everything. So we take that vendor neutral approach and teach you the foundational skills that you would need no matter what software application you may be using on your, on, on your job. We, we do look at a lot of open source opportunities and we get you on a lifelong learning path as opposed to the vendor treadmill. We are globally accepted. We have um, partners and customers and students and candidates around the globe we are moving into the um, Middle East region more and more. We have a number of programs and, and groups working in Japan and China and Taiwan and a variety of areas throughout the world, in Africa, um, and, and a number of places around the world. So uh, we've been around for a little over 20 years mm -hmm. and are the largest vendor neutral certification in this space. Um, and uh, we, we really enjoy creating this material for you. We look at CIW as an opportunity for a career path. Taking an individual from the very beginning, 
um, helping them as we look at our ICT program, um, teaching them digital literacy, taking them from, hey, I can use my phone to what is it about the phone that how do I make it work better and how do I accomplish these things and why does it do the things that I need to. And then you can move into our foundational series with CIW, learning more about the Internet, how to use that in business, learning about HTML5 and CSS as you come through the site development associate um, course and program, learning a little bit about network technologies and the infrastructure that websites and the Internet is built upon. And then as you move into our new web and mobile design series, which data analyst is a part of, you come into a, an, an opportunity where you can really focus on where you want to go with your career, learning more about HTML5 and the, the languages that you need in, in building websites. How do you build a good user interface? What are the processes with that? Um, and, and moving through, you know, how do, how do I build for a mobile app? What do I do to build a mobile application? These, some of these courses are, will be coming up, um, coming online in the next several months as we go through the late spring and early summer and into the fall. But we move um, to the last course in the series, Data Analyst, which is the course we'll talk about today, and I think this is something that really will pull all of these courses together to provide a great opportunity for an individual as you move into a career. Data is everywhere, as we'll talk about today, and it doesn't always come in the same structure or unstructure, as the case may be. Exactly. And so this will help bring together all of the learning, a lot of the learning that you've been getting as you've gone through these other CIW courses to be able to pull together and truly make great business decisions um, and provide appropriate data, whether we spin or not spin is the question. Mm -hmm. But how do you put how do you pull that data together from a variety of places in you, for your career and for your employer? So if you're in a you know if you're a web marketing manager, how do you use your data analyst skills in doing better marketing. If you are a merchandiser for a large organization, how does this come into play for you? Or if you're running your own business, I think it's very important that you look at the data so that you can see where where you're going with these um, with this skill. So um, one of the things as Todd is mentioning is that data comes from so many different sources. Some of the sources are very formal, some of them can be informal, and the data analyst needs to sit in a position where they can look at this myriad of source information and be able to put them into silos or containers of some sort to be able to do realistic and valuable comparisons. So understanding how to work with the sources, how to go about the analysis process, are two of the beginning steps, but we have to go beyond that. So I have all of this information, but where am I going to place it? Am I going to keep it on a thumb drive in my desk? Am I going to keep it up in the cloud? And how secure will it be? Who's going to be allowed access to that data? And by what credentials will they be able to access that data? Because there may be parts that are generally open, and there may be parts that need to be hidden from certain parts of your organization. And that's where the ethics come in. And when we say to spin or not to spin, what we're talking about here are the ethics involved. Um, there's a, an old trope that we say numbers don't lie, um, but stati uh, statisticians do. Because I can take a trend line in Excel and by changing the algorithm, completely change what the perception of my data is. And understanding that being a data analyst is in many ways a very sacred position because what your recommendations are may very well become the trajectory of an organization, whether it's a mom and pop shop or a full-blown Fortune 100 company. These are huge decisions that need care. Um, so why would you want to do this? Well, um, for one, the personality type that goes into being a data analyst is somebody who likes to look at both the broad picture and the minutia. 
So a data analyst is somebody that really enjoys getting their hands dirty and really enjoys doing a balance and a counterbalance of what they're looking at. When they're looking at all of these sources, will you be able to vet whether or not this is anecdotal or empirical, empirical evidence? These are very, very important. If you have all this information, a data analyst can make sense out of what appears to be total chaos to anyone else. Um, and through their insight, will be able to help guide the trajectory of a given company. Thank you, Zipporah. These, Thank I you, think Tom. these are these are some very interesting um, responsibilities that a data analyst has. And 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 as as we've been creating this course and this certification program, we've we've really looked at what the responsibilities are of of, of this position, and how do we get all of this data mm -hmm. and make sense of it and how do we teach people how to, how do, to do that. that. Yeah, very, very important. So here's the main domain objectives for the data analyst program. Basically, we're going to talk about the fundamentals of what data analysis is. We're going to talk a little bit about big data. What is big mm -hmm. data? Because, you know, it's a, it's a fun term out there, but what does it mean? What does it mean? And, and why is it important to you? Right, and it's the antithesis of big data, little data? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and where is that little data? Is that my thumb drive that you know, used to be so small? So, and then how do you work with various data sources? This really kind of gets into the crux of how do you bring chaos into... Order into chaos. Into order. How, right. Yeah, how do, you, how do you change that? And how do, you, how do you really accomplish that? Because data comes from so many different places. It's very true, and you know, I think about that when I think about working with all of these sources. Think about a fruit salad. Mm -hmm. You know, does a pineapple intrinsically have a whole lot in common with an orange? But no. when you put them in the fruit salad, it becomes something meaningful. Mm -hmm. And in a sense, what a data analyst is doing is looking at all of these different ingredients, these sources, and presenting us with something that's useful and hopefully palatable to the company. Hopefully, hopefully, and helps that company make what much better make decisions. much better decisions. I think data is very important with that. And so we, we, we spend a lot of time in what tools do you use in capturing that data, but also how do you analyze it, how do you report it, how do you present it? Right. Because again, because of that role of the data analyst, and depending upon how you present that information, that can mean a lot of different things to the individual True. you're presenting it to. You don't, you don't want to provide incorrect information, but you don't want to skew that information to accomplish your own personal desires and goals. Exactly. You know, I'm reminded, as you're saying that, Todd, of a statistics class. A professor showed us a, a bar graph, mm -hmm. and there was really no explanation on the axes. So on the one bar graph, it looked like one company was doing incredibly well, right. and then they had taken the same graph and just turned it upside down, but without looking at those axes, it looked like everything was going to tank. Yeah. And that's really where the data analyst lives, is understanding that you can't just look at a snapshot. You have to understand all of the components of that picture. Right. And how do you show that to people so that they, they understand, understand it? Because a lot of times, in, those of us in the technology world, we have a tendency to speak in all kinds of acronyms. Techno geek. Techno geek. <laughs> and some people have no idea. Or you may be speaking in certain acronyms, and those mean something completely different mm -hmm. to your CEO. Exactly. So you need to, we need to be careful with that. So let's move into the nuts and bolts and the importance of what this certification program is all about. So let's first talk about data analysis. Okay. Data analysis. The analysis. Take it correctly. <laughs> It's early in the morning here in Arizona, folks. Um, so when we talk about good data, well, what exactly does that mean? Understanding the source of the data, is it a reliable source? How large is that sampling? I think my favorite analogy for that is four out of five dentists recommend Trident. Yeah. Well, that's not really a good size sample because it only sounds like 80% until you dig deeper. So understanding where the data is coming from and how are we going to structure this data? Is it going to be something that's very formal? 
Will this be something that becomes more fluid for our company? How we're going to store it and look at it? And are we going to centralize everything? Will all of our results from every survey, every web log, every transaction go into one place? Or are we going to spread these out and look at them as independent pieces of data? And of course, uh, you really can't talk about data in today's world without talking about your placement on the web. And that brings us right into search engine optimization and understanding based on the data that we're getting where the trend lines are in our visitors, what they're looking for, will help us to understand how to work with optimizing those search engine options through our keywords, through our headers on our pages, through our descriptions, all, all um, as part and parcel of our web presence. Right. And those, those are very important points. And they come from so many different places. So as we think about structure and unstructure, we may have certain databases that work very well right. in a structured environment, but yet when you start pulling data from your social media sites, it may not fit. It may not fit. Or from surveys that may be very unstructured as far as how do I put those ones and zeros together and that type exactly. of thing. Exactly. And so we move into big data, where it's really interesting because one of the first things is data management. But with data management comes in a variety of things, things like security uh -huh. of that data. How, how are you going to store it? Who has access, like we talked earlier? And ethics comes into this also. Always. How, how are we going to use that data? Maybe you get some data from your competitor, but is it ethically right, right. to use that? Um, exactly. You know, one one of the examples as we were we were um, going through the development of this, um, one one of our individuals, I believe it was Lisa, talked about a former employer where they purchased a list that was a one-time use list, mm -hmm. but yet wanted the, the her supervisor wanted her to put it in the CRM, so it was so they, so they captured could use that it multiple captured times. that data and use it multiple times. So those are some things as we look at the data, we need to understand where it came from, how to secure it properly, so that we don't give out personal information as we're presenting the right. data. Um, make sure that it's secure so, so folks can't hack into it. That's part, you know, really, that goes into another area. But we need to be aware of the need of, of that. Of who has access. And right. you know, we're speaking, I know m many of our audience members are educators. Mm -hmm. So when we think about you know, this data management combined with ethics, the first thing that should be coming to our minds is FERPA. Mm -hmm. um, I need to know my students' grades. I don't necessarily need to know their entire history Correct. with their family and so on. And who am I allowed to share that information with? And that's a really good example of what we're talking about in management here. Exactly, exactly. And then the question is, is where are we going to store it? How are we going to manage this? Is it going to be in-house? What are the benefits? What are the drawbacks? What's the cost? What's the cost? Mm -hmm. How do you secure it? Is that a more secure place than in the cloud? Right. Um, and in some instances, it may or may not be, depending upon where you're storing it. How much do you put out into the cloud? Mm -hmm. Do you do it all or just parts of it? And, and how, how, secure does that, is how secure is the cloud? Or you know, um, how, how, are, how are your individuals within your organization able to get to it and keeping others out? What is your business environment? There's a variety of different companies and, and organizations that need to access the data. How do, you, how do you manage that? And many organizations, and we go through this ourselves, Many organizations go through a migration. Yes. How are you going to position that data to migrate from your current system to a new system? Mm -hmm. Is it going over wholesale? Or is this an opportunity to split your data, maybe archive some of it, maybe keep some of it in a different place? Perhaps um, through the creative use of reports that can be open and accessible to a multitude of employees? Right. as opposed to some reports that are highly confidential information. Exactly. These are all the business decisions that we're going to be discussing in the curriculum. Right. Very, very good. And let's talk a little bit more about where, data sources and where it comes from. OK, so it can come from pretty much anywhere. It can come from a survey on your website. It can come from a feedback form. It can come from 
understanding what which products you have that are selling and trending well. It can come from information that you've captured through customer service, through people calling in. Um, how are you obtaining the data? Is there an expectation of confidentiality? I think we've all experienced when we call customer service, hearing that our call may be recorded for quality control purposes. But what exactly is that quality control? And who has access to hearing those calls? And how do you make sense out of information when the trend lines on the website say orange, but the customer service calls are indicating purple, and your gut says go green? Yeah. Those, those are very, very difficult questions to sometimes answer. Um, but as we look at the data, it can help us guide and direct us. And, a lot, and looking for the, the patterns. The patterns. The patterns is what we're really looking yeah. for. Yeah, and understanding where those multiple data sources are and what, what it is. Now, as we, as we move more into how, where is that data coming from, how do I capture it and analyze and it? And analyze it. What are the tools? Now, this, this lesson, some might say, oh, but now you're moving into... You're not being a, vendor neutral, You're not being huh? vendor neutral. These, we, we, we looked at this, and, and it really kind of, as I look at being vendor neutral... But not absent. But not absent. This is why we have a lesson with a variety of tools in how do you manage this structured, okay. this unstructured, this data from multiple sources, how do you manage this? So we have a number of software options that we profile. Exactly. And as we profile these options, I'm not going to go into what each one of these options can do because that's part of our course. But what's important here is to understand that when we present an option, we also present its strengths and its weaknesses mm -hmm. so that as you're learning about these options, you would be able to make a better decision for your own company. Maybe your whole company is tied into the Google engine and Google Fusion mm -hmm. makes a lot of sense. But maybe your company is completely open source oriented and you would rather die than use something with a corporate name. So Hadoop may become the perfect solution for your company, or you may want to use Hadoop only to find out that really our project is the solution that's going to give you the most bang for what right. you're looking for. Or and I think it's yeah. important. Or there may be some mix. Exactly. Because many companies out there don't have an absolute, right. especially when we're talking about small and medium-sized businesses. Uh -huh. they are, they're going to bring in whatever they can and they're going to hire you as a data analyst, and you may need to work with Hadoop in one situation if you're a consultant. Right. You may be needing to work in some, with some other resources and, and, and options as you work for, an, for various companies. And so as you understand this, again, it goes back to our vendor-neutral roots, yes. where we're not absent of profiling these various um, applications that are available to, to the various job roles. Um, but it also provides you with an opportunity to see how they are alike. And if yeah. you understand the fundamentals of how various programs work, right. your learning curve when, you, when you're presented with a new application is minimal. Is exactly. Because and so these are some of the reasons why we provide these types of lessons. Right. Because what CIW has always done and, and what, it, what we do so well is helping people to understand theory of why things work and the critical thinking that is necessary to make an informed decision. That is the key, an informed decision. An informed how you, decision. How do you know how to get there? That's great. And so we come to the fun part of this. Once, once you get the data, once you've kind of put it together and started looking at what it means, how do you tell, how do you present that exactly to the CEO, to mm -hmm. the financial officer, to the marketing team? Right, and, and ultimately to your customers. Yeah. So again, we, we put ethics up here at the very top because the data analyst is going to have access to information some of which is not for public consumption. Mm -hmm. And sometimes knowing things that you cannot share 
can put you in a very difficult position ethically yourself because you want to say something but you again that doesn't mean that we're withholding information it just means that there's an appropriate time and place mm -hmm. for those things so we need to think about those things as we move into this realm exactly. of, of data and how to report it um, making sure that, that we present it in an, an objective unbiased. perspective exactly. and unbiased instead of a subjective approach. Exactly, to. because what the data analysts will present ultimately is going to have a direct impact on business outcomes. What is the most relevant right. information? You know, I've, I've seen a number of dashboards in, in various um, CRMs and, and uh, sales tools and a variety of different things. And sometimes it's overwhelming. Exactly. Sometimes it's wrong type of information that, that we're presenting. Mm -hmm. So understanding what that individual needs. A salesperson needs to see certain things. Right. A tech, a tech support individual may need to see different things. And the CEO needs to have more of an overview of the whole organization. Right. But, but maybe not the minutia. Exactly. Of, of various things. And so it's how do you build out those dashboards that provide the right information to the right people at the appropriate time. Mm -hmm. and, and that just follows right through with how you do your reporting, what kind of charts you would put together, and the presentations that you would make based on the data is a really clear understanding of who is your target audience and what are they going to do with the information that we present. So as we can see, as we look back over all of these core topics, Everything here is truly underscored by that ethical decision of how you're going to work with the data, where you're going to store it, and why. And, and we begin to understand and I think appreciate that the role of the data analyst is key to an organization's health, but the person who does this has to be healthy themselves ethically. Correct. Yeah. Funny how that little word is such a big... It's such a huge topic. <laughs> <laughs> and, it's, and it's a challenge to, to bring in those things mm -hmm. into a particular course without making it all about ethics. Exactly. Because, you know, there's we need to teach how to use the data, how to present it, how to do those things, but we can't teach we can't everything teach. there is to know about right. ethics. I mean, you know, you can spend a lot of time becoming an attorney to understand when yes. and why and how to avoid or, and, or not. And what's way. ethical may not always be legal. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So that kind of rounds out what the course is all about. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about how we present this information. So let's look at some of our course material. This, this textbook has five lessons. Now that may seem small, but there's a lot of information. They're really in chewy lessons. Yeah, and a lot of things that are that you as an individual, as a student going through this, will need to do. Yes. Um, and, and so there's, there's a, lot, a lot in here. There's a number of lesson objectives which move into what the exam objectives are to help you prepare for that. We have our typical um, product, the pre-assessment questions at the beginning of each lesson. Mm -hmm. We have the various uh, pieces of the content, lecture parts of it, uh, online exercises, mm -hmm. various things that we'll get into a little bit. Um, and, and hands-on labs in how to go about as you collect this information, mm -hmm. how do you do it, how are you going to present it? Yeah, you know, Todd, I think at this class the, the labs are really front and center in several of our lessons. Right. Um, perhaps a little bit more so, yeah. perhaps a little bit more so, sorry we had a little bit of weird sound on our phone line yeah. here, um, than in some of our other classes. So when we say five lessons, yes, but they're really deep and intense. Right. And, and as an educator, I look at those lessons and I can see how each one of these lessons on its own merit could almost become a full semester's worth of work. Yeah, they, they, they can. These, these are not labs that are... Five-minute labs. Yeah, type these things, go, you know, go do these five steps and away you go. Some of those steps can be very, They're very, very intense and there's a lot yeah. of thinking involved. Right, exactly. Um, we move into the review questions. We have optional activities and labs um, in, the, in the course material and we have case studies. And one of the fun ones I put up here, you'll notice there in the green, the title is, The Internet is, is, worth, <laughs> is Worthless. Um, I, I, 
I enjoy these case studies in these in these courses because some of them are quite fun. This one talks about Blockbuster and Netflix and how um, a decision and an actual statement um, from from uh, the leader at one point made a big difference in the outcome of Blockbuster. Mm -hmm. uh, many of you that, that uh, you know have been around a few years, um, such as myself and and Zipporah, remember what Blockbuster is. Maybe some of our kids may not. They may have no idea. Have no idea what a video <laughs> store is that you actually go to. They think, you know, Redbox. Exactly. But, but you know, we, we want to take an approach as we're learning to have some fun mm -hmm. as we go through these because there's a lot of intense information that we need to go through. But as we can have some humor and have some fun as we go through this, right. I think that it, it will stick in, in our minds a lot more. At least that works for me. Yep. Maybe it works for you. I, I love the case studies because they they open up an opportunity for all sorts of things that we can do in our classrooms, whether they become debates or spin off research pieces or or just looking at it at face value as you read that text and watching the reaction of students. What do you mean the internet is worthless? It's worthless. Exactly. I know a business person who stopped teaching internet technology classes because they thought the World Wide Web was going to go away. Yeah. I think they've made a mistake. They, they probably have. And, and so we can look at that and what are those things that we're doing in our life right now mm -hmm. that have that same type of impact. Those are the things, the types of things right. we can think about with these as well. So how does it affect our future? Then let's talk a little bit about the online components. A variety of resources there. Uh, movie clips just like our other foundations and uh, um, user interface design and HTML5 course have. Um, interactive exercises. We've made some, some modifications to some of these mm -hmm. where these, these activities that you used to see, you know, some of our other courses have a true false or a matching or, right. or you know, various word puzzles or whatever uh, terms and definitions, different activities. We've moved these and started moving many of these into a SCORM type of environment so they're much more interactive. Mm -hmm. With this course, they also are very are are much more. If I'm I'm probably saying this incorrectly, but but they have better reporting functions. Yes, yes. Anything that's form wrapped now goes right back into the grade book. So um, a teacher will be able to tell not only whether or not a student has performed an activity, but how many times they've tried this activity and where their scores were. So it's okay if a student fails the first time, as long as they go back. And, and learn improve. and improve. Yeah. And we can watch those trend lines inside of our grade books all through the magic of SCORM. Exactly. So th those are some great things. Any lab files that are needed and other materials that are there. Um, there's a number of materials for um, the instructor. There'll be slide mm -hmm. presentations and, and, and various things for the instructor to, to use as we go through. We continue to try to improve and grow these resources to make them better, better resources for um, for you as the teacher and you as the student. Um, the, uh, the other couple things that we have as far as assessments are concerned, there's an online pre-assessment which mirrors what the certification exam mm -hmm. might, look, might like. look like. They are not the same questions. We, we really work hard not to have those as the same questions. There's of course mastery products. There's a lesson quiz that's available. Again, these are intended to be randomized delivery of, of content to okay. help you understand the lesson material because as we think about the two main goals of a CIW product is one, yeah, we do want you to pass the certification, but we want you to be able to... We want you to own that material exactly. and really know it and, and that's where the lesson quizzes and the course masteries really come into play. Yeah. And again, um, the tools that the uh, teacher can use to track how well their students are doing and identify a weak spot perhaps in a class. Or, or an individual. Or an individual so yeah. that we can do some um, remediation as needed. Yeah. And, and then as we move in and help them prepare for that high stakes exam, mm -hmm. these um, bring recognition to that individual to provide them opportunities to show their employer, these are the things that I know. Mm -hmm. And then because they've gone through all of these resources, right. they can actually fulfill those job roles when they when they get employed and when with with their employer and provide great benefit to those businesses. So those are a number of, of our of our resources. Now the question 
the $64 million question. Tell me about the exam. the exam. What's going on with the exam? Okay, so yeah, we know, yes, there's a high stakes exam here, but what we're hoping that we've really underscored for you is that, yes, we want you to pass the certification, but more importantly, we want you to truly own the material. But to the exam itself, it is a high stakes um, industry certification. The exam is 75 minutes long. It is all multiple choice. Every question has only one possible uh, correct, answer. correct answer. We deliver it through multiple venues, um, both our own CTC, CTC, PSI, and of course the VIEW testing centers. And Todd, why don't you talk about the video because that's really, that's new and it's that's exciting. New. That is new and it is exciting. And we're, we're in the final stages of getting that ready. But what, what video online proctoring means is that if you're in a location that is a long distance away from a brick and mortar testing facility. Rural Idaho. Exactly. If you have a video camera and broadband service, you can be proctored through video, mm -hmm. through your camera, in your home. Yep. And you don't have to travel places. We have some people around the world that to go and take a CIW exam could mean hours of travel in each direction. Hours of travel in each direction, potentially needing to stay over in, in a Correct. hotel. So it can be very challenging for some of these and some of our, our candidates to actually take the exam. Exactly. So we've been working with uh, the, a company by the name of PSI that, that is, is very large in the education industry in the United States. And they've been expanding quite significantly. And this video proctoring will be available um, for all CW exams. That's so exciting. But we're, the, the two that we're really kind of pushing and starting with are use the user interface design right. course, which we released recently, and this data analyst course. The exciting thing is, is, is we have published these exams in all three of those testing services. Mm -hmm. They are available right now through CTC and VIEW testing mm -hmm. centers. And by the end of the month, the goal is to have them available for video proctoring. That's amazing. So this is, this is a very exciting time. Lots of great new things. Um, there is um, one question that we'll probably have um, is how many questions are on this exam. And it is, there are 48 what? questions for this exam. And, and what is the passing? Passing is, I believe, 75%. I believe so. Yeah. So these yes, are... Correct. Uh, Oh, thank, thank you, Lisa. You. Yeah, Lisa. <laughs> we were hoping you would jump in on that. <laughs> so th I'm here. these are these are, these are some th some great new things coming yeah. for certification exams, mm -hmm. and and there will be um, soon some enhancements to our CTC program over the next probably six to nine months um, in that delivery method. So there will be some neat things that are coming up. Um, I just wanted to throw that teaser out to you. That also pushes me to make sure that we get that done in the next six to nine months. So um, that's kind of an exciting stuff about the exam. Now let's talk a little bit about where data analysts fit. Right. Because as we look at the new web and mobile series, it's different. It is very different. It, it used to be that we really were pushing more towards just design the website, make your mm -hmm. website agile. Um, make it responsive. And now we're looking at a much broader spectrum of what web technology means both in their history and what you do with all of that information and how do you capture it. Right. And, and there's a variety of career paths that you can take. Mm -hmm. So as you come, as you start moving through the foundations program with internet business and site development and learning about that, and learning about the, the programming and user interface design, then moving into, you could move into data analyst. You could. You could move into some of the other courses in that series. Exactly. You could um, go social media for one example. Right. You can pick and choose how you go. And it may make sense that when social media comes out that you do that and then data analyst. There's a variety right. of ways that you can go. There's not a single pathway because there's not a single outcome. Exactly. There are a variety of outcomes. And so as we expand the web and mobile series and bring these courses and certification programs into the into existence, um, right. you will be able to determine, okay, I want to go this direction for 
you know, internet marketing or for, you know, social media marketing or where I'm, wherever I might be going, a specific pathway, yours may be, look very different exactly. than your neighbors. You know, when, when the web was new, mm -hmm. um, and, and I've been doing web work since HTML2, um, if you knew HTML mm -hmm. and, and you were passing fair with Photoshop, you could do amazing things online. Yeah. But in today's environment, it's no longer just knowing one little piece. Um, now, our foundations courses give you a nice broad base so that it will give you an opportunity to figure out what part of this is really my interest. Exactly. And, and now we're offering an opportunity to have this broad, if you will, liberal arts education mm -hmm. in web. And then you can go on for your master's through these seven new courses and really specialize in something. Exactly. And, you know, somebody could do data analyst just on its own. Exactly. Yeah, you, you can do that because I, you may not have any interest in building uh, a website. Exactly. But that data analyst needs to understand enough about it so that you can communicate and get the right information. Right. Because if you're not getting good data. Why? Then, is, it, is it the way yeah. the website is designed? Is it not responsive? Who knows? Exactly. Who knows what it is? And so that those are those are some things that you can look at as you look at how you're going to incorporate data analysts mm -hmm. into your career path, into your school, into right. your organization, your corporation, whatever. How am I going to get these people trained, whether it's as an individual or as a as or a it's large part group, of a holder, or, a larger or, path, part of a degree program. We already have um, universities that are incorporating. Mm -hmm and starting to use data analyst as part of a degree program. Yep. And so this is very exciting so that you can see that there is value here and, and what you what you can do with that. We appreciate the time that you've spent with us. Zipporah, I appreciate um, working with you and going through this webinar. Um, we, as always, it's a joy to work with you, Todd. Oh, thank you. And, and I'll pay you the $5 later for saying I'll that. I'll just so. take a candy bar instead. <laughs> so, okay, we'll work on that. But we appreciate everybody coming. We want to open it up for questions. So Lisa, if there are any questions that um, our audience is bringing in, would you let us know and we can start answering those. Uh, there was one very interesting question. I think you pretty much already covered this, but it was posted before you started on that, um, before you started discussing how the data analyst is positioned. Uh, Robert Cowens is asking, do I need these certifications if I'm already a computer forensics analyst? Um, that could be a very interesting combination of skills. Um, that I would say, you know, absolutely, this could certainly benefit you. Um, could dovetail quite nicely with the with the with the you know skills you already have. Yeah, there there will be some very similar um, uh, skill sets skill sets in that, and 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 really, when we look at forensics, there's a lot that we look into that. I mean, there's there's the analysis of that data, mm -hmm. making sure that we're collecting it right, but there's there's also how do you get past security. How do, you, right. how do you really dig it, dig into that? So I think that there are a lot of things that that this particular course can benefit you mm -hmm. with. You will have you may have some of the information already, and this just adds to that knowledge that you may already have. That was a very interesting yeah. question. But forensics mm -hmm. is an interesting. That's a fascinating field in and of itself. It but I do think yeah. that there is a lot of crossover here. Mm -hmm. Other questions? Uh, most of the other questions we had have not been about the program itself. We had a few technical issues um, about 20 minutes ago. We were having some audio issues. So um, if you wanted to like resummarize your information on uh, what you were covering about reporting on data, it might be kind of helpful because uh, some of that kind of blipped out on us, unfortunately. OK. Let's, not a problem. We can go back. Yeah, let's go back to the reporting real quickly. Uh, this slide here, the with the core topics on reporting, is that yes. the one, Lisa? Yes. Okay. Yes, that was the one where we were on that slide when when the audio was cutting out on us. Okay. Okay. We'll we'll try to remember what we said. <laughs> well, a lot of what we said had to do with the ethics involved here. Yeah. And and understanding that um, being privy to a broad picture does not give you license to blab it to everybody in the organization. Yeah. And understanding, you know, at what point you share information and with whom you share that information 
is part of this. Um, knowing where the data is coming from, understanding how it fits together to give you a good overview of the health of an organization um, and the way that you report it is going to have a direct in, out, um, impact on business decisions and ultimately the outcome. And I believe this is where I talked about a professor in a stats class showing a graph both right side up and upside down. And without really looking at the axes, you really don't know what that graph is saying. Exactly. And that's really the crux of what the data analyst is doing, is making sure that the presentation of the information um, makes sense to somebody who's just glancing at it quickly. And that's where a dashboard comes into play. And knowing what information to display within that dashboard environment is also key. Not everybody needs to know everything. And a CEO or a CFO may only need to see a very high level, whereas your tech support may need to see the minutia of what's happening yeah. in a given area. Right. Yeah, there's, there's, a, there's a couple quick terms that come to my mind in, in reporting, whether it's on a dashboard, whether it's in a, in a slide presentation or whatever it might be, clear mm -hmm. and efficient, accurate, and appropriate for, for the audience. You know, we, we talk about going back to the ethics piece of it. Just because you can doesn't mean you should. Exactly. Um, and again, there's a bit of privacy that comes in comes into this when we start pre presenting data there there are certain audiences that we shouldn't be showing certain information to right. um, and and so you need to know your audience when mm -hmm. you're giving a presentation you need to understand what data they're going to need to be able to move forward in whatever they're doing mm -hmm. you know presenting a lot of technical support statistics to the CEO unless when he's when he and the CFO may be more interested in financial exactly. information, it, it just muddies the water and doesn't give them all of the information they need. There may be appropriate times mm -hmm. to present that technical piece of it. The CFO may want to drill down into it after right. the presentation. And so there's there's different, you know, there's there's a lot that goes into how you put to get put together a report or a presentation or a dashboard. Um, you know, various various job roles in your organization need to know different information at different times. Exactly. Hopefully that summarized it and we didn't leave out anything um, in, I don't think we in, did. In, that, uh, in that explanation. So Any other questions? Uh, yeah. The, Keith Weber is asking about uh, do we have any webinars or trainings for teachers of these certifications? I think what he really wants to know about is professional development which I know is another topic near and dear to your heart. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, the short answer is yes. Uh, I believe that the data analyst is coming up on the fall schedule. Yeah, but we will have, uh, I believe in the fall, we will start having um, the online mm -hmm. professional development training. If your organization is interested in, in, in adopting and, and moving data analysts into your, your curriculum and, and your degree programs or through your through your organizations, we can set up face-to-face -face training Correct. as well, depending upon you know the size and and uh, um, quantity of students that would or individuals that would need that training. Mm -hmm. But definitely, um, I believe we're starting in August. August, um, I think, online. is our target yeah. for for the beginning, um, which in the school year is the fall for so much of our country. The other piece that I think is really exciting about our professional development. Um, and this will be happening and rolling out over a period of time, I wish I could give you more than a period of time here, is that in conjunction with our classes to prepare um, faculty to understand the core material, what it is, own the actual material and feel comfortable teaching it, we are also now beginning to create a series of videos on classroom integration with the material. Yeah. So just because you know it and you understand it doesn't necessarily mean that you're feeling comfortable with, yes, but how do I make my class get excited about this? And that's a big, big, big piece of the changes in our professional development programs. So thank you for asking that. Yes. Yeah, lots of great new things coming as far as professional development is concerned. 
Yeah. Okay, um, one more question from Rolando Nunez uh, asking if this is suitable for an entry level uh, program and if there are any prerequisites to data analyst. You know, I, I would recommend at a bare minimum our IBA class, our Internet Business Associate class, to give a solid foundation of understanding the placement of technology in business. Um, in a perfect world, I would say site development and user interface, um, certainly to have an understanding of what goes into creating a good website, a functioning website, because that is going to ultimately affect how the data is being collected. If your website falls flat on its release and nobody's clicking past your home page, it doesn't necessarily mean that your products are bad or your services are not desired. It may just mean that the presentation is incorrect. So at, at a bare minimum, IBA, maybe SBA, and user. Yeah, I'm, user I'm trying to think what we, what we did actually put in the book. I think, I think those are definitely things that we, you need to look at um, getting through much of, much of foundation courses. You also need to have a basic understanding of spreadsheets, spreadsheets. a little bit about database. We, we go into those a little bit in some of mm -hmm. our courses. But having an understanding of that, because as you get into in, into the um, the data analyst course and you start collecting the data, where are you going to put that? Exactly. How are you How are you going to manage that information? So mm -hmm. having an understanding of data, you you can you can get really intense. Um, one of the universities that, that that we work with will be putting this in, not quite as a capstone to a bachelor degree program. But after they go through a number of other courses that have to do with databases and that type and of thing. database management system. Exactly. Right. Then, then they'll be taking this data analyst course. However, just because that's where they position it doesn't mean that that's right, right for every school. But definitely the foundation, the CIW foundations courses, a little bit about spreadsheets, a little mm -hmm. bit about databases is going to be extremely helpful as you go through these courses. And, and you know, Todd, if if you needed to just do some quick remediation for spreadsheets or mm -hmm. get a really high-level understanding of what databases are, this is where our ICT curriculum may come into play. Exactly. Um, this may be something where you want to use that as a way to sort of introduce and lay the foundation, um, particularly if you're talking about a high school level student. These wouldn't take very much time at all but could really enhance what's happening in the data analyst right. course itself. So, so the Excel, the, the, the spreadsheet spreadsheets and the ICT database. Is the spreadsheets essential and database essential yeah. so would be great tools as sort of preparation for this. Right, exactly. Yeah, so there's a, a, a variety there. Um, we'll have more information as we, there, there's some information on the website. We'll make sure that we get more of this yeah. out there and available so everybody sees that. Um, great questions. We've um, anything else, Lisa? Nothing major. I've been answering some other questions in here where I could. Um, I think we've covered most of the important topics now. Okay. Um, a lot of people are asking about cost and pricing um, information, and the answer is basically it varies depending on, on different licensing options available to you. Right. Correct. Right. Yeah, so please contact your account managers. Um, if you don't know who your account manager is, call Certification Partners, and, and we'll, point you we'll in the right get direction. you to the right place. Um, and, and, and get you taken care of. If there are other questions, please let us know. Please send those in, either through the account manager or directly to Sephora or myself. We'd be happy to uh, um, answer any of those questions. Um, just one more quick um, plug for when materials are going to be available, because that is a question. The exam is live and available in two of our three um, exam delivery methods. The curriculum, Will, will, will most likely be ready before the end of April. Um, and, uh, but, but contact us and we'll have much more specific information on that. Um, we're just going through the last few um, review cycles of the actual course book, mm -hmm. getting some of those online activities, um, the, um, the SCORM wrapped online exercises, and, and proofing and going through the final practice exam questions and that type of thing for the, for the CIW online portal, but those will be coming very, very soon. 
and then you'll be able to see um, evaluation copies of those mm -hmm. within the next probably two weeks at the longest. At the longest, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And again, thank you everyone for, for attending. We appreciate your time. We know that uh, you have busy schedules, as do we, um, but we appreciate getting together for this. And we will uh, provide you more information on this program as well as the remaining web and mobile series courses over the next few weeks to month or two. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. All right. Thank you, everyone. We appreciate it. Thanks for joining us today.